One major collaborator from Mildred Pierce who didn't return for Possessed was director of photography Ernest Haller. Now, Kurt Bernhardt would not have Haller on his film. He hated the cameraman's habit of constantly adjusting lights after every take. Bernhardt craved spontaneity in the actor's performances, and he felt Haller's constant tinkering was a distraction. And Joan Crawford agreed. But then she rejected every other cameraman on the Warner Brothers lot. Remember what I said about who was actually in charge. Now, Bernhardt finally suggested a cameraman he'd worked with in Europe, Kurt Corrent. Even though Corrent had never shot a film in Hollywood, Jack Warner and Joan Crawford agreed to let him shoot tests with the actress. And Crawford loved the results. Unfortunately, Corrent was not a member of Cinematographers Guild Local 659, but Joan Crawford wanted him. So Jack Warner offered to add 13 union cameramen to the Warner Brothers newsreel department if the Guild would grant a waiver allowing Corrin to shoot the film. And the Guild refused. Sid Hickox was assigned to shoot the film, but after several days, Crawford demanded he be replaced. Finally, in the 11th hour, she approved the hiring of Giuseppe Valentino, a.k.a. Joe Valentine, an Italian emigre who'd been working mostly as a freelance cameraman since the silent era, and whose only recent hits were a pair of Hitchcock films, Saboteur and Shadow of a Doubt. Bernhard and Valentine proved to be a perfect team, as the director challenged his cameraman with lots of unusual setups and complicated tracking shots, and Valentine knocked them out with ease. This film may have been the reason Hitchcock hired Valentine for his next project, Rope, which created the illusion of the film being enacted in one long single take. Now, to prepare for this part, Crawford visited several Los Angeles hospitals to observe the behavior of women being treated for mental illnesses. And after the film's release, one of those patients tried to sue Crawford for stealing her life. Now, that must be quite a compliment for an actress. And Crawford was proud of her performance in Possessed, and she was seen as a front-runner for the Oscar in 1947. It's very flattering. It feels wonderful to be wanted by someone. I needed that feeling right now more than you'll ever know. The Academy Awards ceremony that year featured the original Moonlight moment when Frederick March, presenting the Oscar for Best Actress, announced Rosalind Russell as the winner before realizing his mistake and calling Loretta Young to the stage. And Young was so surprised, she demanded to see the envelope as evidence. Now, I'm surprised Joan Crawford didn't demand a recount. FYI, Robert Osborne had Joan's performance in this film on his should have won an Oscar list. Now, next week, on Noir Alley, I'm presenting one of those rare movies that revolves around a homme fatale. Plus, it's perhaps the best film from one of the few female producers in Hollywood's classic era. In the meantime, remember, you can ask questions or gab with us about these films at Noir Alley, if you do the Twitter thing, or follow Noir Alley on Facebook, or go nuts and do both. Until then, remember, whenever you are watching Joan Crawford, Joan Crawford is watching you.